All right, so we're going to go through. We're not going to go through every single problem. My, my plan was maybe to hit every single problem, but I'm thinking about it, and I don't think we're going to hit every single problem. But we'll go through some ones. You know, again, like I said, you might have gotten it right before, um, but now you look at it, you're like, oh, my goodness, I'm not really sure what was going on there. So let's do number five. Let's see what that looks like. It says find the length of LO, line segment LO, if O is between L and M. So I'm not going to write out every single word to that, but let's let's draw it so we have an idea what's going on. Um, o is between L and M. So if L is right here and M is right here, O is somewhere in between. Does that mean it's necessarily halfway in between? No, in between could be anywhere. It could be here. Or it could be way out here. It could be in the middle if you wanted it to. All right, but let's go right here. All right, it says LM is 18.6. So watch, the whole thing, LM is 18.6, and OM is 12.9. 12.9. And you have to find LO. Well, that shouldn't be too hard, should it? So what's the math I have to do to do that? Just subtract them, right? That's all it is. But notice what I did to help you out. I, I drew it out, right, because then when, when you draw it out, then you look at it, and it absolutely makes sense to you after you draw it out. And then you just do that work, whatever that comes out to be. What's that? 5.7, is that right? And that's what LO is equal to. Five more seconds, you got it. All right, uh, number six is kind of the same, isn't it? But we have to do just a little bit of algebra with this. So let me draw that thing out. So again, it's a line segment, and you've got this right here, and you've got D, E, F. So this is D, this is E, and this is F. And the whole thing is 24. Now they put a nice little arrow there, but I'm going to do this squiggly looking thing. So the whole thing is 24 centimeters. They tell you D, E is 3X plus 5. And then EF is 5x minus 13. Okay? This is pretty much like what we did on the last one, right? Except you got some algebra here. Pretty much. Except you're not just subtracting. What are you doing here? You're adding them up. And send it equal to 24, right? Because these two segments right there are the whole thing, right? And the whole thing's 24, so you just add them up. And the question says find the length of DE. Find the length of d e so it's not just a matter of finding x though is it but you do have to find x would you agree you find x put it in here solve for d e do i need to do that i'll try to do it real quick so that equals 24 that's what 8x minus 8 right is that 8 yeah 8 5 yep so it's negative 8. If you add an 8 right here, that's 32. 8 fours are 32, so x is 4. Everybody follow me? Okay, and then you stick it in here. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 5 is 17. Did I do that right? Okay. Sometimes when I go too fast, I'll miss something, but I think I got that. All righty. What about 7? You okay with that? Square has a side length. What's the area? It's just length times width, right? Okay, 3.7 times 3.7, and that's your answer. All righty. What about uh, 8 and 9? Number 7, the length of the side. It says 3.7. What's that? Skip 8, 9, and 10. Midpoint. Let's write the formulas down, okay? So the, let's do the distance first. Remember the distance formula? Square root... Given two points, right? So if I give you two ordered pair right there, everybody see that? Then the distance formula is this. It looks like Pythagorean theorem, doesn't it? So I always start it off like this. Every time I do distance formula, I start it like this, and then I throw the stuff in there. So this is the distance between, or this is, yeah, between the x's. So how do I do that? It's just x1 minus x2. It doesn't matter. The book sometimes says x2 minus x1. Does it really make any difference? Doesn't make any difference. Why? Because... I'm going to square it, and it's going to come out positive, right? Because the only difference 
going to x1 minus x2 or x2 minus x1 is that um, one will be positive and one will be negative. But if I square it, if I square a negative, it comes out positive anyway, doesn't it? So it doesn't matter what order. I always like to go 1 minus 2. And then you do the same thing to the y's, and then there you go. This is 8, distance formula. What do you mean? I wasn't? Oh, you know what? Because I have a couple different versions of chapter 1. Let me see. Let me see yours, Alex, your original one. Is that why you're asking all questions? 7, 8, 9, and 10 are different. Yes, they are. Huh. Sorry about that. Because I do have a couple different versions of the test, and I thought I picked the right version, but I guess I didn't. Well, but way, it's the same, it's the same right? stuff. The numbers are different, right? Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. We'll just stick with the test that I gave you today. Is that all right? I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. But the stuff as far as the stuff that we go over today, we'll just take the one I gave you. Yeah, I thought I might do that. Oh, by the way, chapter if somebody had, does somebody have their Chapter 4 test on them? I do. Because I have a couple versions of that. I couldn't remember which one was the one, so I didn't get that printed off yet. So do you mind if I hang on to that until... I print it. Thanks. Uh, all right, so that's the distance formula. Then, in one of these problems, you're going to have to know the midpoint formula, correct? So the midpoint formula. Remember, it's a point, right? It's an ordered pair, right? So write it with the parentheses and the comma. And how do I find the midpoint? Add up the x's, add them, and divide by 2. Right here, we subtract, don't we, to find the distance. The midpoint, we add the two endpoints together and divide by 2. We do the same thing with the y's. So that's the midpoint formula. Is Yeah, let's do number 10. That's a little trickier, isn't it? Um, I, I gave you a little shortcut way to do it when we talked about it, but... Yeah, see, that's the problem with shortcuts. Is sometimes I don't remember the shortcuts, so I always go back to using the formula itself. So I think I might go back, just do the whole formula. So it says find the coordinates of point Q. Okay, so find point Q if P is 3, 2, and P is the midpoint of NQ. So here's my line segment, NQ, right? P is the midpoint, and N, they tell you that N is 5, negative 3. So look, Q is an endpoint, isn't it? Do I know what Q is? No, because it says to find it. So we'll call this X and Y. Is that all right? Everybody okay with that? All right. And they tell you the midpoint, though. So it's not a matter of just throwing it into this formula right here. They tell you the midpoint, so they tell you what this is. So this is what I would do. I would use this formula and plug everything you know into that formula. So you know the midpoint, though, don't you? It's 3, 2. That equals this right here. Take the two x's, add them up, divide by 2. All right, the two x's to what? To the endpoints, correct? Well, this is one endpoint, and that's another endpoint. So what would I write? x plus 5, right? Divided by 2. Everybody see that? I don't take x plus 3 because 3 is my midpoint. I've already used 3 right here. And then how would I do the y? It would be y what? Minus 3 divided by 2. That's right, because I would take this endpoint, that endpoint, add them together, right? That's a 3 right there. y plus negative 3 or y minus 3 divided by 2. Now what would I do to get x and y? Well, How do you do x plus yep, exactly right. So I would take this, set it equal to 3, and I would take this and set it equal to what? Okay. 2. Yeah, and then solve for x and y. So if you don't remember the little trick, um, you could always do it like this. All right, so let's do that real quick. It shouldn't take too long. x plus 5 over 2 equals 3, and then uh, y... It's a weird y. Let's try that again. So y minus 3 over 2 equals 2. And it won't take you long. You can do this in your head, couldn't you? 2 times 3, right? Multiply both sides by 2. So that's 6 minus 5 is 1. So x is 1. Did I do that right? What about this? 2 times 2, that's 4. Add a 3, and y is 7. So what's your ordered pair? It's 1, 7. 
It's as easy as that. Well, let's do that. Let's jump to number 11 now. That was, yeah, that was number 10. So we're not jumping too far away. So that was number 10. Now let's do, moving down to number 11. Uh, it says a circle has a circumference of 7 centimeters. This is what I would do if I was to do this problem. Um, so I'd write C equals 7, right, so for circumference. And the question is, find the radius. Radius equals, don't know what it is. I always like to put a question mark if I don't know what it is. Do you know a formula for circumference of a circle? What is it? For circumference? Circumference is just a distance around. When you square something, you're not finding a distance, are you? You're finding area if you square something. So what is this? It's 2 pi r. Okay, that's something you need to have memorized, all right? So it's 2 pi r. And um, what are we trying to solve for? For r, right? And we know c, so just plug in the stuff and then solve for r. So 7 equals 2 pi r. If I want to get r by itself, what do I do? Divide by 2 pi, right? Divide by 2 pi. And I tell you what, if you wanted to leave it like that, I'd be okay with that. If you want to plug into a calculator, that's fine as well. But if you want to just leave it like that, not even bother with a calculator, I'd accept that. It's okay. You okay with that? All right. Not off the top of my head, because it's... Well, what do you do? What do you do to those two? Look at number 12. It says M is the midpoint, correct? So what uh, must be true about LM and NM? Yeah, so you just set them equal, solve for Y, no big deal. We good? All right. Is this stuff coming back to you now? But really, we, haven't we been doing the same kind of stuff chapter after chapter? We just do it with different pictures, right? So really, it's really not that much different. That's the cool thing about geometry. Has anybody felt like that, like at the beginning of the year, you're a little bit lost, you weren't sure if you're going to be able to, to deal with it very well, but then you started doing the next chapter and the next chapter and the next chapter, you're like, this is all the same, isn't it? Doesn't it kind of seem like it's all the same? It's just you're doing it with just different figures and different pictures and stuff. I think it is. Yeah, let's do 13. You want to do that? I'll tell you what. Let me draw the thing first, okay? Because sometimes this can be a little bit tricky for some people. So one looks like this. One looks like that. And then another one looks like it goes through like that. Let's extend it. All right, so there's our picture. Um... This is C, B, and E. Down here is A, uh, F, and D. Okay, so number 13 says, which angle is a vertical angle to angle A, B, E? So let's uh, draw angle A, B, E. Let's mark A, B, E. So A, B, E, that's this one right here. It's obtuse looking angle, right? Everybody see that? Yeah, it is obtuse, right? So look what it connects. Sometimes this is a little bit tricky because some people would think like this was the vertical angle or this was the vertical angle. We got to know which one it is. But look what it connects. That's what's really helpful. What does this arc right here connect? Connects AD with what else? C. With CE. That? That's E. Oh. <laughs> Makes it worse. All right. So look up here. What connects those two same lines up here? C, E, and A, D. This one here. Doesn't it? Doesn't that connect the same two? Yes. Oh. Great. There you go. All right. Everybody see that? See how it connects the same two lines? Because some people do get a little bit mixed up on this. Some, sometimes people would go from like here to here or from here to here or just this one right here. But you got to make sure that they're the same two lines that intersect each, with each other. So what would it be? It would be C, B, D, wouldn't it? Or B, or D, B, C, doesn't matter. All right? So that would be a vertical angle. We got time, right? Let's do 14. It says, let's tell you what, let's get rid of all that. OK, 
Okay. Oh my gosh, that is like the rapid process. They're a little loud. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at 14. It says uh, angle CBF. Let's find CBF. Uh, CBF. This angle right here, we'll put a little arrow right there. It's 6x plus 18. It says find the value of x so that CB. CB. Oh, this this one right here, this horizontal one right here, and BF are perpendicular. All right. So if these two lines are perpendicular, CB and BF, this must be what kind of an angle, Alex? It's a right angle, 90 degrees. So guess what 6x plus 18 has to be? Equals 90. That's right. Equals 90. Then you just solve for x and you're good to go. Was that the same on your original test? No. I don't think any of them are the same. I really sorry. I really thought I was giving I mean, you the same like, one that I. They're, like the same thing, just numbers are a little different and stuff. Concept, yeah. Right, because I make several different versions, so I don't use the same version every year and all that. So, um, but I really thought I picked out the right one. I guess I didn't. Uh, let's see what else. Let's just stick with this test though, even though it's not the one you took. And you can do that, right? So what is that? That's six x. What's that? Seventy two. And that's nine. Right. I don't do that every year. Sometimes they do repeat, but you know. usually could be either one. They're not exact. And it's not necessarily going to be the exact problems, but they'd be problems that are very, very close to it. Okay. Yes. Yep. And then, but I type in all that. I type in. No, I, it's a, another program. It's called InDesign. It's a program that I use to do the book. Okay, let's keep going. What about uh, 16? We're using the same picture, aren't we? Uh -huh. Oh, did I skip 15? Is what? Oh, it's a different picture. Uh, no, I'm not one of those teachers. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I'm not a big extra credit guy. Well, see, I talked to my dad about this because my dad was a school teacher for 36, 7 years, something like that. So I asked him a lot of advice throughout the years. And early on, I asked him about extra credit. He's like, well, to tell you the truth, the only people that really deserve extra credit are the ones that did their work in the first place. Okay, Why would somebody that didn't do their homework and didn't do what they were supposed to do deserve extra credit? I was like, you're absolutely right. So the ones that do their work anyway are usually the ones getting good grades anyway, for the most part. Um, so they don't really need the extra credit. So I just don't give extra credit. Um, what are opposite rays? It just means, they go in, it means they're 180 degrees from each other. So that just means they go in complete opposite directions. So it's like, so if they say that um, what B A and B C are opposite rays, it means that's a right, it's a straight angle right there. It means it's a straight line. So it means that this doesn't go off like, you know, um, 179.9 degrees. So you can look at it and know for sure it's 180 degrees without just guessing. All right. So that's what it means by opposite rays. So if you were a teacher, wouldn't that kind of make sense? Now, I, I know as a student, you want every point that you can possibly get. But as a teacher, doesn't that make sense about the extra credit? And plus, I like to be as fair as I possibly can. I mean, you know, not everything's always fair. But if I offer extra credit to one person, I don't think one person should just get extra credit, right? Because I've known teachers that, that do that, that, you know, like two or three people that ask special for extra credit, oh, okay, I'll give you extra credit, but then nobody else has a chance to do it. So um, if I ever do give extra credit, it's for everybody. It's not just for one person. So, um, And that's why I just try to avoid extra credit. I figure do what you're supposed to do and you'll be fine. All right. Let's go with this color. It says angle EBF. Write it down. Angle EBF is equal to 6x plus 4. Actually, let me do this. I'm going to copy. Oops, ran out of room. Let's try this again. Copy this. 
just in case I write all over it, I can don't have to redraw it. This is number 15, 1518 from uh, the test that I gave you today. It might not look exactly. And notice, it does say B, A, and B, C are opposite rays. We just discussed that. Um, and it also says that B, F bisects angle C, B, E. B, F, this one, C, B, E. So what does that mean? That means that angle 3 and angle 4 are equal to each other, correct? All right, so that's a big hint. All right, so um, EBF is 6X plus 4, and CBF, angle CBF, is 7X minus 2. And it says uh, find, find X. All right, well, let's take a look. EBF, where is that? That's angle 3, isn't it? And CBF, oh my goodness, this is way too easy. And, then, and that's angle 4, isn't it? So if BF bisects that angle, we already just said that 3 and 4 are equal to each other. So what do you do with these two? You just set them equal to each other. That's, oh my goodness. And even the math is easy on this one. 7x minus 2 equals 6x plus 4. That's at x equals 6. Just as easy as that. That was almost embarrassingly easy, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm ashamed I put something like that so easy on the test. Yes. Yes, take a pass. Uh, number 16. Oh, my goodness. That was just as easy. Why did I do that? Maybe that's why I made a different test, because that was way too easy. <laughs> it, yeah, let's skip that. And then 3 and 4, that's easy, too. Oh, my word. I don't have the answers right in front of me. I'd, I'd have to go dig through my stuff. Yeah, just set them equal to each other. That's all you do with it. It's, oh, my goodness. That's way, that's way too easy. Maybe that's what it probably was. Maybe. Maybe that's why I made the other test. Okay. Uh, what about 819, though? 19 is a good one. Look at this one. It says if a supplement of an angle has a measure 78 less than the measure of the angle, what are the measures of the angles? Okay. So I'm not going to type all that out, but it says if a supplement of an angle. So what do I write when I say the supplement of an angle? It's not 180, though. Because 180 is not a supplement. A supplement is something that adds up to be 180. So if I gave you an angle and I didn't tell you what the angle was, call it x, what would the supplement of that angle be? It would be 180 minus x. Okay, That's the supplement of an angle, of an angle, an angle that we don't know. So what would I call the angle we don't know? Call it x. What would I call the supplement of that angle? I'd call it 180 minus x. Does that make sense? Okay, so the supplement of an angle has a measure 78 less than. So watch, has a measure means it equals something, right? It equals what? 78 less than. Notice what I did. I put the minus in front of the 78. I didn't go 78 minus because if it's 78 less than something, we're taking 78 away from something, correct? So I'm taking 78 away from what? The measure of the angle, which is just x. Make sense? All right, so the hardest part of this is just setting it up, obviously. Okay, the math is not that hard. Um, let's add an x to both sides, so that's a 2x. Let's add a 78, so 7 to 2, what? 258. Okay, and then divide by 2, whatever that is. Somebody do that. What is it? 129? Yeah, that looks right. And it just says, what is the measure of the angles? Plural. So that's one angle, right? What's the supplement of that angle? Just take it away from 180, right? So 180 minus 129 is 51 degrees. So those are the two angles. You need to have both of those marked. Got it? Because it says, what are the measures of the angles? Plural. Yeah, this was easy. This must have been a CP test. Oh, on the original test? Yeah. Good. Oh, she did it in 20 minutes, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wasn't in Yeah, well, this... <laughs> she's still talking about it, huh? Well, that's right. Let her be... Let her be happy about it. All right, it says find the surface area. And look, my goodness, I give you everything. This should be pretty easy on this, right? Do I give you anything like this on the original test? Are they are the same? I uh, made this easy for you too. Look, I gave you the I gave you the the whole entire uh, formula for this. It says of a cylinder, if the radius is six, so watch off to the side. I put the radius is six and the height is ten. 
It's all you got to do is plug and chug. Couldn't be easier, could it? So it's two pi. That's uh, my ism. Thank you very much. I, I said that before she did. So six. I've never said plug and chug in here. I say it all the time. I say it all the time in my other classes. Actually, I got it. I got it from my college professor at Liberty. His name was Dr. Wooldridge. And um, he said it all the time. That's the first time I ever heard that, and I always thought it was funny. So I thought, if I were taught, I'm going to say that all the time. Where's the pie button? Well, you don't need a pie button. Let's watch. I'll show you. But listen, listen, listen. If you do this, you don't even need to use the pie button. You can just write it in terms of pie. I'm fine with that. Watch how easy this is. 6 times 10 is 60 times 2 is what? 120 what? Pi. What's that? 36 times 2 is 72 pi. Add them up. 120 plus 72 is what? 192? What? Pi. It's not pi squared. I'm adding them. Pi. One pi plus another pi or two pi. It's not two pi squared. I'm not multiplying them together. I'm adding them up. So look, if you just want to keep it like that, if you want to keep it like that, I'm perfectly fine with that. Did you even need a calculator one time through this thing? No. If you want to keep it in terms of pi, I'm okay with that. That is okay. All right. And then um, you don't have to worry about putting it into the calculator. If you wanted to, you could. I'm not saying you don't, you know, you can't do it. But on this calculator, it's 192. Here's the pi right here. I have to hit second function. On this calculator, I don't have to hit times. Guys, I'm not finished. Thank you. On this calculator, I don't have to hit the pi or times button. On this calculator, I just hit 192 pi. On some of your calculators, if you have that TI30XA, I think is what they call it, you got to put times and then the pi button. Don't use 3.14. Use the actual pi button on the calculator just so that we're consistent. Everybody's doing it the same way. That's if you wanted to use the calculator. You didn't have to. I would have been fine if you would have just kept it 192 pi. All right, because on my answer key, I can almost promise you, I don't have it in front of me, but I can almost promise you that I would say 192 pi or 603.2. All right, 603.2. I would probably give you either one of these. Not probably, I definitely would give you either one of those. All right, the decimal, yeah. All right, we good with that? All right, sorry I didn't go through the original test. Um, I, hopefully the next one. I'll tell you what. Does anybody have Chapter 3 test? Okay, pull that out. Let me just make sure that I copied the right one for you. But go through some of these things. Go through the original test that I gave you. All right? We went through basically the stuff that you need to. Go through the original test, even if you got it right. Listen. Even if you got it right the first time. I would still go through those problems again just to guarantee that you still remember how to do that stuff. All right? So don't just, you know, say, oh, I got it right before. I don't have to look at it again. Well, it's been months since we've done that stuff. But to tell you the truth, has it really been months? Yeah. yeah. Not technically. Last year. Some of the stuff. <laughs> but really, like, uh, uh, yeah, I guess we haven't done midpoint and distance for a while, have we? Yeah, we did midpoint on our last test, but not midpoint distance. But stuff like this, I mean, this process of looking at, two things and subtracting and adding them up and sending them That's equal to... We've been doing that stuff every chapter, though, haven't we? They might not just be line segments. One one chapter, we might take two angles and set them up and equal to each other or add them up and set them equal to 180 or add them up and set equal to 90 or something like that, right? Um, but really, and that's what we're going to do the rest of the year. I mean, the same kind of stuff, right? All right, that's it. We'll do chapter three tomorrow.